So I have now had my silver Leica M6 and 35mm Summicron for around six months, and I feel like it's time for a change. With something like technology, everything's moving so quickly. So it feels right that every now and then you want to change it up. I think what encouraged it is I saw someone selling a black Leica M6 for a very good price. I headed across town. I had to go see it. And on my way across town, I caught a few of these snaps because I still had some Ilford XP2 in the camera. And I met this guy and we grabbed a coffee, nerded out over cameras, Hasselblads, Leicas, you name it. And then I decided to head to my favorite store. So right now we are near Barbican and we're heading to my favorite shop in the world. And that is Red Dot Cameras. So we're gonna have a little peek today, do a bit of shopping. The other thing that I really want is I want a 28 mil. I have given this 35 mil a decent run for its money, but both the SL2 I have and the QT Monochrome both have 28 mils and I want a complete setup. All black, all 28 mil, boom. As you can see, other than an official Leica store, they have one of the most extensive Leica collections I've ever seen. From the M system, to the R system, to the SL system, to stuff that outdates before I was even born. They've even got this glass cabinet in the back, which is a real contrast to the brand new Leica M11s and the SLs. And it's a collection of all these inactive cameras that probably predates before I was around. And it's just an absolute spectacle to look at. So I'm here to ship on one of these Leica bodies, but also to swap the 35 mil for the 28 mil. Now, this one here was mine, which is the 35mm, and that one is also mine, another 35mm for the Whitelander. I am looking at either going for the Type 1 or the Type 2 of the 28mm. Now, when you see a Type 2, it's very hard to then buy a Type 1. So, that is the predicament today. So that's it, I've got the 28 and I am buzzing, I'm very excited. Just loaded up some Porsche 400, let's see what we can get. So this area that you're seeing now is the Barbican Centre. And I didn't really know much about the Barbican Centre. My girlfriend Jen went there a couple of months back and she took the Leica Q2 monochrome and she caught some of these images. And I thought that they were just incredibly unique, sharp, stylish, the geometry was amazing, the shadows and the light casts on the wall are beautiful. And I thought that if I could get enough light, I could also try and recreate some of this. Yes, in Portra 400, it's not gonna be the same effect as the black and white. And also that Q2 monochrome is sharp as. So I just wanted to see what I could try and get. I think the depth of this shot is really, really lovely. I love that there is a figure right at the back there, but because it's film, that's not the focus. It's too far away to get that sort of detail. So mainly what you're focusing on is the symmetry and the light. I think this one's turned out okay. I just think it maybe could be a stop brighter or two stops brighter. It wouldn't have been a big thing to lose some of that highlight detail, and I wish we had. But looking at it now, I think it's really nice, and I wanted to find a couple of other opportunities to see if I could capture it from a better angle. So I wandered down to their level, and I caught these two. I really like both of them. And if we look at the one on the left, it's a wider field of view. 
Again, it could be a stop under exposed, but maybe we want a bit of contrast through the image, so I don't really mind that. And I think there's enough interest in the background here, but the main interest is of the subjects, the two guys on the bench. And with this second one, what we've actually done here is we've eliminated a lot of the external distractions. And now you can really just focus on the two subjects. So in focus, two meters. a lovely little setting now. Yeah, he's had a look at the black one and the silver one. Which one, if you had to go for one, which one would you go for? Go for the black one, yeah? Mil. Try and block out the blue, wait for the tap, there you go, boom. With the angle of the GoPro and the unkept moustache, you can also see right up my nostril, and it's not pleasant, and I'm really sorry. With this shot in particular, I really like the isolation of that one guy on the bench on the left. Just for a Looks like James May. I really did think that was James May. This one was quite funny because I saw this woman and she was the only one in this long strip and I thought, I'm gonna sprint after you and I'm gonna get it. And now that I've seen the frame, I don't know if it was actually worth it, but there could be something there, it's just missing a little bit of crunch. And I don't know what that crunch is. Maybe you can tell me in the comments, but I felt like it was nearly a really nice photo. So I pop the camera down, wander a bit further down here, and I see a nice opening. And this woman just walks past me on the right, as you can see. So I wait for her, wait for her, wait for her, bang. There it is. It's quite simple. I think that this would have been nice if I'd stepped back away from the wall, so kept the same frame within a frame, but had a longer focal length so I can bring that subject closer to me, because at the moment they're a bit lost within a rather big frame, whereas you can make that subject the point of interest of the image. But on a 28 mil, you can't really do that. She felt a bit too far away, but I still really like the image. take this photo. St Paul's is one of the most iconic buildings in London and I'm not surprised, look at it. Skipping a lot of footage out because you don't need to see more travel but we're heading to Victoria and in Victoria is probably my second favourite shop, Mr Cad. Now, if you haven't been into Mr. Cad, it's owned by a couple that have probably had it for about 50 years. And it is awesome. You get lost in there. There's so many good deals and bargains in there that you want to get. And also, if you're looking to get film and you're near Victoria in London, definitely head there because it is one of the best places to get film. I mean, it's a bit like a car boot sale. You've got to really keep your eye open to see if there's anything in there that you want. And you've got to look closely because it's a bit all over the place. But look at all these lenses these cameras, there's a huge range of everything there. From starter cameras to professional level cameras. Walking down this corridor here, you've got all your sheet film, your large format, and then just at the end on the right here, the fridge of glory. 
Hello. How can we help? Hi there. How are you doing today? Good. What film? What size? Uh, let's go for five, four hundred, thirty, all thirty-five mil, please. And um, five, four hundreds. Uh, five, one, six. Do you have one sixty? In? No. Oh, At the moment, don't. they're not producing it. Are they not? No. Why is that? Pass. You're normally in the man in the know. Correct. Um, I'll Don't grab move. two cine stills, 800 T's, please. Thank you so much for your help. As I walked out of Mr. Cad, I still had one shot to burn, and I'd seen this place on the way to the shop, but I had to come back and grab it, file the last one the roll, and actually it's quite nice. It's a little bit boring, it's a little bit plain, but if you shoot film, you know you've also done it where you just want to get the reel done and you shoot something that's really meh. Whereas actually, luckily, this isn't too bad and I am glad I got that photo. So that's it, my new setup. The black Leica M6 and the F2 28mm Sumicron. I'm very, very excited. It's given me a new buzz to get out there, to shoot more. And also it completes my lineup. Sometimes that's all you need. Not that I'm in a creative rut, but you just need something fresh, something new. So I look forward to sharing a lot more videos with you now I've got this new setup. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.